everyone. Welcome back to my channel. It's your girl, Savvy. If you're new to my channel, welcome to my channel. Today, I have a great video for you. Today is going to be my very first fashion-oriented video on my new handbag, and I'm very excited about that. If you're interested in videos like this, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Give me a thumbs up or even a comment in the comment section. All is welcomed. All is appreciated. So thank you in advance. So my love of handbags, designer handbags, really started, I would say, somewhere around 25 to 30 years ago. Um, my mother and my grandmother, both who are both Italian, really appreciated very good, well-made leather goods, be it shoes, handbags, all of that. I remember in the early 90s getting a, as a gift from my mom, getting a Dooney and Burke bag. That was like a big thing back then. And they weren't super high-end bags, but for a young woman, because I was a young woman at that time, very young, that was a good quality bag, was to have like a Dooney and Burke or a Coach or something like that. And I, I loved it. I, I used it a lot. I had like a matching wallet. Absolutely loved it. And don't get me wrong, I was a single mom for a long time, so I've had my fair share of you know, fashion purses that you pay, you know, 20 bucks for and they last you, you know, two, three dozen usages and then they look like crap and you donate them or throw them out or whatever. But hey, you know, every once in a while, it's nice to have like a fun fashion bag for a particular event, something like that. Perfectly fine. And I've, as I said, I've had my share of them over the years. But I started to really appreciate good quality, high-end designer handbags more and more. And on my birthday in 1999, my godmother, my gumar, she bought me a Louis Vuitton small tote bag. It was my first Louis. It was genuine Louis. And I still have it. I see how it has held its value. You know, Louis Vuitton started in the 1800s as a shipping trunk company and just beautifully made bags. And of course, they match everything. You know, it's a, the, the newer ones have the gray with the, the light gray insignia. And there's been some that were white and some that were black with more colorful insignia. But their basic design is the brown with the tan. But it doesn't matter. It goes, Louis goes with everything. So... I remember just being so excited about that bag and I, I used it and I still use it. I also remember when the knockoffs came off and people had like knockoff parties. This was back in the day before they shut all that down, you know, in downtown LA or downtown New York, uh, you know, places that were selling these knockoffs. But I had a friend that bought a knockoff and from far away, it looked like a genuine Louis. Just when you got up closer, you looked inside of it. It said, uh, Louis Vuitton uh, made in Pappas, France. Pappas, France. So, you know, I was super appreciative of my Louis tote, which I still have. And, you know, my grandmother was that kind of person where if you only, she didn't have a lot of clothes, but the things that she had were quality and she took good care of them because that was her thing. It's like, if you only own one pot and one dish rag, they better be a quality pot and dish rag and you better keep them they better be the cleanest pot and dish rag in, in town. And so with my Louis tote, you know, I've always taken really good care of it. And I still have it. And, you know, I, I love a Louis. Who doesn't? This past year, I was, uh, during COVID, I had started out the year using my Louis clutch, which I purchased just a few years ago. And I love this clutch. But it's almost kind of like not big enough, especially as we got into COVID and we've got, you know, masks and wipes and antibacterial stuff. And, you know, I started running out of room in here. And that's when I went over to the, to the tote. So basically, you know, here it is end of spring, beginning of summer, I just wanted a new bag. So the big reveal, I ended up getting a Teddy Blake bag. Teddy Blake, New York. Ta-da! The big reveal. Ta-da! Again. So the reason I went with a Teddy Blake bag, uh, two things. A couple of years ago, first time I'd ever heard of a Teddy Blake bag. Two years ago, I was working at a production. I walked into a studio, and as I was walking in, this celebrity was walking out, and she was about four or five feet from me, 
beautiful woman, impeccably dressed, and she was holding what looked to be, and she went by me pretty fast, of course, but she looked to be holding a Hermes Birkin bag. And I'm, of course, marveling about this. It's like a $30,000 bag. And anyway, I go in and then it's turned for my hair and makeup and I'm talking to the makeup artist and I happen to mention that I saw this celebrity and oh, she had this Birkin bag and, the and she stopped me and she said, oh girl, that wasn't a Birkin bag. Although she's very wealthy and she probably has a Birkin bag, that wasn't a Birkin bag. That was a Teddy Blake bag. So that was the first time I'd heard about a Teddy Blake bag and it was a beautiful bag that the woman had. So then this past year, I started hearing a little bit more uh, on, you know, about Teddy Blake. And it turns out that the founder of Teddy Blake was raised on the French Riviera. It was his mission to go to New York and start a handbag company using the same fine Italian leather that the really high-end bag companies use and the high-end hardware to make the Teddy Blake bags and then offer them to, you know, luxury high-end designer bags at affordable prices for women just like me. Because I'm in Los Angeles, but I am not one of those women in Los Angeles that has a veritable bedroom-sized walk-in closet with dozens upon dozens of designer bags. I have about a dozen designer bags total. And, you know, I, I take really good care of them and I'm really picky about what bags I get. So here is my Teddy Blake bag. This is called the Bella Stampato. And because I'm Italian, I know that means beautiful, hard. I think it translates like beautiful, hard copy bag, which I think means beautiful structured bag would probably be a more close translation of that. And that's exactly what it is. It is fine Italian leather. It is nicely structured. It is a little bit soft, like it's not like hard, like you can knock on it and it feels like wood. It's not, it's really nice quality, soft leather, but just structured in the way it's manufactured and put together. I love that it has the crossbody strap that you can remove so you can wear it as a crossbody bag. It's a 12 inch bag, so it's not too big. It's not your, like you're lugging around a suitcase like back in the day we all did that. Um, it has wonderful pockets. Oh boy, do I love good pockets and a, a good utilitarian bag that you can really organize well. I can't stand when you spend a lot of money on a bag and it's a big open like crevice that everything's rolling around in there. Like I have an insert to organize that, but when you pay a lot of money for a bag, I don't think you should have to do that. So with this, there's three big pockets and it's just like room for everything without being heavy or crowded. So in the middle, I have my Louis Vuitton wallet, which is my summer wallet, my yellow wallet. I can put my cell phone in it. Um, I've got my antibacterial, my masks, my tissues. In this compartment, I have my protein bars, my uh, snacks, my, my nuts, my snacks for my little grandson, my little organic cookies for my grandson. Um, in the third compartment, I have my makeup bag. It says boss girl or girl boss because that's what I am. And, you know, my little, like, pad. I always carry, like, a little, like, notebook and some pens. I love my, my beautiful mask, which I'm wearing a little less of, but still, still wearing it, still trying to be careful. And it really just is a nice, it's not heavy. It's, they have bigger bags. They have 15 inch bags, bigger bags. They have smaller bags. They have a variety. It's not just like the Birkin style bag, which I was glad about because I didn't want that bag. I just wanted a really nice bag with, you know, high quality bag. And that's what I got. And by the way, it's about $400. So, you know, with the Louis, they're over a thousand. A lot, most of the designer bags are over a thousand. You're getting designer quality at the 400 it's they're between three and six hundred dollars the teddy blake bags that you know i've seen so an excellent excellent bag i really love this bag and i've only had it a short time and i've already gotten a ton of compliments compliments on it and i really love it also you get a teddy blake shopper to help you sorry off camera that's my little dog he wants to come in um, this is the box it came in, so it's a nice designer box, and of course it has the dust, dust bag, this is Teddy Blake, New York, so it just really comes just pristine, I mean, I'm really impressed with this company, I really love the bag, 
The other thing I love about the bag is the color. They have a lot of bright colors, or this isn't really a bright color, but it's a nice tone that isn't like drab, like black. You know, I have a lot of black bags and just wanted something that would go, go through summer into fall and then maybe into winter. And I really, really love this bag. So I give the Teddy Blake Company four out of five stars. Now you might be wondering, Sabby, why won't you give them five stars? Only a few things, but let me just cover them. Maybe these are just little things, but they're things that kind of like, this is what's keeping me from giving them five stars. And moving forward, the, Teddy Blake may change these things and then, you know, I'll be able to, you know, change, change to a five-star review at some point. Because I will buy, in the future, I will buy another Teddy Blake bag. I just know I will. I'm not happy with it. But just a few things. First of all, I do think the name Teddy Blake is a bit boring. I do. I mean, maybe it's because Louis Vuitton is such a beautiful name. Coco Chanel is such a beautiful name. Chanel. But her actual real name was Gabriella Chanel. But she had enough forethought that she knew that Gabriella Chanel just did not sound that great. And that Coco, her nickname, just sounded like a better name so her line of goods is coco you know is really she's coco chanel louis vuitton and then of course you know gucci versace ferragamo valentino's name is valentino garavani so but just you know the bags are valentino balenciaga i mean i think those names but even with the more like american names teddy blake sounds very bland but it also sounds very american Kate Spade is very American, too. Her real name was Kate Brodahan when she started to design her bags in the 90s. But she was engaged to Andy Spade, and he was the one that said, you know, I think Kate Spade, you're going to be Kate Spade anyway. Just be Kate Spade, because Kate Brodahan doesn't sound that, you know, it just sounds kind of boring. So don't love the name Ted, Teddy Blake. But here's the thing. The, the bags are so quality that eventually... When they become more known, I guess the name Teddy Blake will just become synonymous with this high-end luxury bag line that isn't that expensive. And, I mean, quite frankly, Coach isn't that exciting of a name, but everybody knows Coach is a good, you know, sort of middle-tier designer bag line. A more higher-end Burberry. I mean, that's not that exciting. It sounds like a fruit. But we all know Burberry. We all know the Burberry plaid and the Burberry blue. And when you get, you know, Burberry perfume, Burberry is a high-end designer line that, you know, I think just kind of we know the Burberry name. So hopefully eventually we'll know the Teddy Blake name too. And it will be synonymous with high-end luxury, you know, bags and, and goods. And, and I will start to like the name Teddy Blake. The second thing, speaking of names... With Louis Vuitton, the name or the, the initials and the insignia for Louis Vuitton are tanned into the leather. Whether you get the old school brown with the, the tan or the newer ones, my daughter has a new Louis that's dark gray with light gray. You know, there's white ones, there's black ones, but they all have the Louis Vuitton insignia. And whether it's leather or they're, they have a couple of canvas bags, um, it's it's tanned into the leather or it's worked into the fabric. It's not stamped on there. I, and, and even with like Kate Spade or my old school big Salvatore Ferragamo tote here, same leather as the, as the Teddy Blake, but the hardware says Ferragamo on it. Even Kate Spade, the hardware, the little spade from the deck of cards says Kate Spade. I'm not loving this, like, embossed, like, stamping of the Teddy Blake. You know, it's like, like a conveyor belt stamp. That's what that's, I'm perceiving that is. I, as, I don't love that, and I'm hoping that moving forward they will have, like, hardware that says Teddy Blake or just something a little bit more high-end with their name on the goods as opposed to, like, just a gold stamp. I just, I just don't love that. So that's the only, that's the only three reasons. Maybe also that the other thing I can say about Kate Spade, God rest her soul. I loved my Kate Spade bag that I bought myself 20 years ago. I mean, it was like a big thing for me. I was a single mom. I went to Nordstrom. I put it on layaway and everybody knew the Kate Spade bag. She designed her bag. And that was, you knew that canvas bag. I had the kitten heels to go with it. 
that was her bag. You knew that design. Coco Chanel, you know the quilted bag, the soft quilted bag. It, you know, I just feel like with a, with a company that's this quality and the vision that the Teddy Blake founder had, I feel like, like this isn't like a real original design, but it also isn't a replica. I just don't love it that they have that Birkin replica. Hermes is known for the Birkin bag. I think it would be nice moving forward if Teddy Blake had a certain style of bag that they become known for outside of just kind of a, a structured bag or a Birkin replica. So those are my those are my notes on that. But again, I really do give Teddy Blake at least four stars, maybe even a, a little bit more than that, four and a quarter, four and a half. And I guarantee I will be buying another Teddy Blake bag in the future. And I'm going to take good care of that and really enjoy that one. So hope you like my fashion video today. Thanks for watching. Hey, everybody stay fabulous. Stay safe. I will see you next time. Have a terrific weekend.